positive comes in the negative end, go out the positive end. You gotta make the circuit? Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Anyway, so, but if you take that spark lead off, any one, doesn't matter, mm -hmm. or just a coil one, um, okay, and have it pulsing, you can put it down to the negative terminal on the battery and it'll jump to it. Mm -hmm. You can put it to the positive terminal and jump to it. But you can also, um, the caps, where it produces hydrogen and oxygen, you can also put it <coughs> put it down to the caps and it is attracted straight in, doesn't detonate the gas. I don't know why people are trying to use that spark to try and make hydrogen and oxygen go bang because no, just an idiot. Anyway, or misunderstood or misrepresented, you know, the info. Yeah. So you can screw them out, screw the caps out and hold the spark down and don't have to go to any. It'll go to the liquid and down into the liquid onto the plate and produce more gas than you could without anything else. It just comes back out. Anyway, now, I can take... It. That spark goes for everything. You know all your insulators? Yeah. You seen that? All your insulators underneath your bonnet, like your radiator hose and your belts and your fuel lines and your... <coughs> that spark jumps to them. Yep. It's attracted into them. Mm -hmm. And if you've got five times insulated wires, it goes through the five times insulation. <laughs> yep. So where's the insulation for that kind of spark? <coughs> the only insulation is to actually make it go somewhere. You understand? Yes. Like jump in and go through the inside of the metal. Yeah, they give it a pass so it doesn't go elsewhere. Yeah. And, well, if you disconnect it off the, um, uh, you know, off a spark plug, it'll jump from the centre of the coil straight down to ground earth negative on the coil, won't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah it, it won't go anywhere. Yes. All right? won't go to the positive side. But what I did find out is that with this, with the gas in the air conditioning, okay? Yes. Now, this is later gas, and when it's primed up, and I'm not sure about the earlier gas, but... If you take that spark plug, one, now, see, the Commodore is on the V6, mm -hmm. okay? So that is, um, but it's it's running weight spark management, do you understand? That's our double firing. Yes, yes, it's a weight spark, yes. Yes! I'm over in the sun, hiding. Um, so if you hold it, and, and the insula in your air conditioner, you've got an insulation rubber, mm. you know, flexi rubber. Yep. If you hold it real close, nothing happens. If you hold it right away, nothing happens. But if you hold it and pull it out to exactly one inch, okay, that one inch, it's attracted to the rubber. That one inch, right on that one inch, mm. the engine goes boom. Stop. Nothing else under that bonnet with that spark will stop that car. Wow. Now you're ringing back in about five minutes. What are you going to do to answer press that button? Press the center one? Yes. Who is it? Oh, she's not dropping in now. Um, so, what happened is that now on the aluminium tubing, mm -hmm. you just go straight to any of that and the car stops, no, no matter whether you an inch or anything, it just <coughs> stops the car. So at this time you run pressure the end, in, pressure in, you know, um, vacuum side. Because you've got a vacuum and a yep. pressure side. Yep. Doesn't matter which side. Mm -hmm. What actually happens is the spark itself is inert. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay? It is neutral. It's positive and negative at the same time, which cancels them out. This is really what you're going to see here. Opposite. Mm -hmm. And the opposite of opposites is equilibrium. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So opposite of north is south, opposite of south is north, but opposite of both is equilibrium. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So we get those together. Now, Tesla made the coil and the, the spark and everything else, and it'll go through a few lines in one out the other, jump in the other one out and everything. It'll go through every single thing around the car. It also is, if you have a um, that spark, good. if you had that spark, um, uh, on a piece of metal that'll bite you. But it's a very interesting thing because you um, you put your hand on the mud guard and aim that spark to the side of the mud guard and get really close and it won't jump to you. And it'll jump to the mud guard, but you don't feel a single thing. That's the greatest converter out of, of your, um, well, 
they don't understand it, but from AC to DC, DC to AC, and, and neutral to neutral, nothing. In other words, a biting spark at the coil, knock you over, it's absolutely nothing. Just takes it to something we don't bite. Anyway, beside all that, doesn't matter, you're thinking. So the, the air conditioning is showing that it still happens. Uh, I tried it the other day. It's still happening, years and years later. So what's happening is you've got an inert gas, okay, inside the, isn't it? It's an inert type gas in the air conditioner. It's a fairly heavy composition of chemicals. Yeah, yeah, chemicals different things. Chemicals, yeah. Well, so is that stainless. Okay, yeah. and this one here, you get a bit of rust on, but it'll come straight off. It's supposed to non-rust, or you know, mm -hmm. but it's composition of mile of different things. What all rust? Yeah. This one does. Mm. Okay, so now the sun keeps moving. Um. So, but the um, the gas in there and everything else is attracting right through the metal and right through the rubber into it. It's attracting the um, the spark, and the two inert ones actually combine, and they don't blow diodes in your computer or your alternator or anything else, because you just go straight around and hit the car again and start it. They won't. They go against all of that. It's not it's not a, a thing known, and it shuts the car down instant. You can go and hit the key again and start it, okay? And you do it again. Shut the car down straight away, but nothing else does. You can go around every other bolt and nut and screw and rubber and hose, everything around that car, every wire won't shut the car down. The only one will is that gas in the air conditioning. And he did this with the old R12 gas and the an R134A, and he did this on points ignition, you said, and electronic ignition. Yes, it was. Okay. Yeah. And the, the VT Commodore that Peter videotaped and everything else. I've tried them all, all different other things, but on that we run out of gas, so now the air conditioner isn't working. But it's still got a vapour in there, right? Mm. So I haven't tried it for about, uh, who knows, probably about eight months or more, because the air conditioner didn't work on the inside. Mm. So all I did was, um, the other day, went back to it, put on, bingo, shut the car down. <laughs> but, you now the air conditioner works. Pumps pumping, everything else. Okay, but that's logical anyway because there's this lady. Who, just to get this, <coughs> this, this older lady turned up here um, a few months ago, or oh, two months ago. She said that she'd acquired a cell off Peter. He says not, but a cell off Peter and put it onto a vehicle and then she tried to reach Peter and couldn't and couldn't and couldn't and then she had it strapped or somebody strapped it to the air conditioning rubber mm. with a zip tie. Now what they didn't realise is when she hooked it up that way, her air conditioning was still pumping, but the air conditioning don't work. I had to tell her that. And I said, as soon as you got off, because she called and everything else, and somebody told her whether it was Peter or somebody else. And he said it wasn't him, but she says it was. I don't know. Huh? Two sides of any sort. So, or somebody else, but I said, as soon as you disconnected that cell off the air conditioning, I said, your air conditioning ought to work again. She said, it did. She said, isn't that funny? I said, no, it changes. And that, that frequency going in can actually stop um, the gas from actually freezing in, a, in a, like a fridge. It changes the whole atomic structure. Yeah. Do you understand? So, back to this now. So, there's <coughs> a funny thing happens. See, a normal magnet, these are neos, mm -hmm. it's powerful stuff. But a normal Neo, that that's an iron, is it? It's a coated, yeah. gal coated iron flame and washer. Now, it doesn't matter iron or anything else, steel or anything else, that'll attract to either side. Okay, you can just turn that around, it'll go to either. It's not determinable. Mm -hmm. right. It'll just do it. So north and south pole doesn't come into attraction and repulsion against that, only have another magnet mm -hmm. or a different kind of metal. You went quiet for a second. Anyway, so now, within that, if I put on either side, what happens is the washer becomes powerful, very powerful, okay? 
and the other side is a magnet. Really isn't. See? But the washer is. Mm. Now, opposites attract. So, we get rid of that washer he's got locked on. And we put what do attract. Yep. Now, what will happen now is that won't go to that washer. That goes to the outside. That goes to the outside. It won't go to that washer. You understand? Mm -hmm. So now what you shouldn't be able to do is take one of them. doesn't matter which one because you've got four poles in this. You turn that around to the way that they don't come together. See they push? Mm -hmm. And you just walk in. And you do put them together. That's the positive side. So I'm going to turn it and make the negative side. Okay, they're little buggers. He gives me something, and all my fingers are busted, and I can't. Would you like <coughs> to have some littler ones, Joey? No. Hey, these ones here will do it for you. Yeah, I know. But these ones. <laughs> try to <pull> apart. <laughs> no, these ones <laughs> stick on properly because it's the wrong combination of. Oh, and the width, width the of the. Thick thickness Washer. and everything else, but that's close enough. But what happens now is they're opposites, right? They're trying to get off because he's out of alignment inside and outside. There's a difference. But what happens is, bingo, and just try and pull that a little. Hang on, go right on. <coughs> Tiny little. Ooh. Swap that washer over, Joe. Yeah, you can do it with a big one. Yeah. It's a little bit bigger. So, normal, that's how they will come together, that's north and south, together. Try and go to the washer. Not sideways. Yeah, it won't go. Won't right. go? Come on, got to go. Now, we turn huh? one of these, and it doesn't matter which way. We turn that around, we get them together, and then go to the washer. Mm. Quite strong. Quiet strong. Right. But it's not noisy strong. No. But what it's what it's actually done is um, it's weakened these outers and it's pulled them in to a different angle. Okay? So you're getting you're getting the outside poles which are as strong as the you know, either side, roughly. Mm -hmm. The negative is the north pole and the negative side. Yeah.